Okay, so you've seen where we set up filters and searches for Spire for the different uh, modules. And I'm in sales history at this point. So if I go into sales history, I'll choose this filter I had preset called export to Excel. And I've got just a setting on it that says use fiscal period of this year. So my, my, my fiscal period. So I chose there. I'm on the items tab. So I've got every line of every order that got invoiced in that fiscal period. Okay, so that's the data I want to use to report on. So what I do is I export that. And I'll just save it to sales. I had a version of it over there already. I'll replace it. Create that spreadsheet. Now I'll open it. And then I'm going to, instead of creating the pivot table on the sheet, because we want to, we, it's better on a separate sheet so that when you refresh or restore this this sheet, that it uh, the pivot table is not connected to it. So if I go File, and I go New, Blank, and then I'm going to go Insert pivot table. So I need to choose a, da a data range. So if I choose the the uh, chooser there, and I go back and find my sales spreadsheet, and I'm going to choose all my columns, if you wish. And I'm just going to choose everything I exported. And then I'm just going to hit enter. Okay, and then it's, it shows that I'm taking it from sheet one and those cells. So I click OK. And now I'm in my new sheet with my pivot table attached. Now that, that other spreadsheet that I had open, I could close that now because I don't need to have it open anymore. So I will save it. And then now there's the columns that are on the sheet here that I can choose for my field list. So now let's say I want to, first of all, group by product code. So I can take that down from my row labels. And each of my product code so that appear on there, they show up here once. Even though I've got it on there many, many lines, it shows up just the one time. So maybe now I want to put the quantity on there. So shipped quantity wants to go on under values. So there's my count of my shipped quantity. So that's the total number I've sold. In that date range, I've sold 233 of that grouping. Now, if I want to further refine that and say add the actual item that I sold, not just the grouping or the product code, I can also take now the part number and put that underneath of product code. So now what I'm getting here is that in my accessory section or uh, here, I've got, again, still 233, but now it shows every item and how many I sold of each of them. Okay, so that's pretty valuable so far, so I can see how many. But maybe I want to know on a month-by-month -month basis how many each of them sold. So now I can take my invoice date, and we'll drop that into the column labels. Now that shows every single day I sold it. This could be a pretty wide sheet, so it's probably not that useful. So if I right click on the date and go group, I want to choose months now and click OK. So now I show every month how many I sold. So this becomes a lot more valuable as so I can see month by month by month how many I've sold of those. In addition to this, maybe I want to add in the customer that purchased these. So I'll take my customer name and I'll throw it maybe just above, in here, I'll insert it just above product code. I missed customer name, throw it just above product code. So now it shows that this customer has purchased three different accessories. And there's the three of them that they bought in the month of March, and so on each of these customers. Now I can manipulate that as I wish now too. So if I want to say, first of all, group by product code, and then by part number, and then by customer, I can do that as well. So now I'm looking at a different angle. I'm seeing that this is the ad matter, the part number that I've sold. It falls under accessories. These are all the different customers that bought them. Or if I want to take the product code out of the picture, now I'm just showing all my items and the, and the customers that purchased them. And if I want to switch that around, I simply move the two of them around, and now I get all the customers and all the part numbers they purchased. So as you can see, this is very valuable because what you can do now basically is save this as a new name. So call it save as, and I'll just drop it on my desktop again. Call it sales analysis or something, sales and. Save that. And then when I re-export my data from here next time around, so I export this data next month or next year or however often, replace that file, overwrite it, 
and then I can open it again if I wish. Otherwise, you could just close it. You don't have to have to look at it. And in Excel now, I'll op go back and open my my recents, look at recents, and look at sales and. And I just have to enable the content and then simply refresh this data. And by doing that, all I need to do is hit refresh all. And then the data gets refreshed and picked up from that new data sheet. So that's one tab you could put on this spreadsheet. You can also go to a second tab and export your, say, your inventory of all the uh, information about your inventory that you want to look at, or purchase history, or many different parts of it. And you can create yourself a whole dashboard and by naming these. So I call this sales, and I call my next one, you know, purchasing, and so on. So I can have myself a full dashboard on exactly how um, and what data has gone into my Spire. So this example, we've got unit sales here. And from here, you can, of course, view this in different formats by, say, taking part number off and just showing the customer sales or taking customer off and just showing the part number sales, uh, taking part number off and just putting on province, if you wish. So you can see country or prov and province there. Uh, and then I've got my next one called sales value. So this one's similar, except that instead of using the quantity, uh, we're now using the value. And all we've done to do that is to, on the value down here, we've changed the settings from being a count to being a sum. So the value of all the sales. So we see all of our sales, grand total sales, to the end of the sheet. We see our grand total sales for, the, for each of the uh, months and for the period that we chose there. Okay, and then we got an inventory one. We took an export of our inventory file. This is a valuation of our inventory. So we've got some of the on hand, so each of the on hand quantities, so that's just a sum. We have the sum of the average, and then we have a calculated field that we've added called extended cost. And the way you do a calculated field, let's go to options and choose. Fields, items, and sets, down arrow there, and go calculated field. And then the one I added was extended cost right here, but you can add as many as you need to. So you can take and give it a name, and you can take a suggested order quantity, for instance, go insert the field, so it equals that, times, and you can take your average cost, for instance. So that would be a new, we call a suggested so I got a new field now that I've created uh, called uh, suggested, which is now becomes available so I can add. So there's my suggested column that I added in. So, um, so yeah, you can see that uh, you can create yourself this dashboard now. So I've got this all I do is re-export re my inventory and my and my sales spreadsheets to a certain place on your server. Make sure it's always the same place and that the format doesn't change. And now you just simply open up your analysis uh, spreadsheet and you can look at all the different kind of data that uh, that uh, pertains to each of those uh, items that you put on here. So um, customizable. Um, it's uh, any any new. Sheet that you can think of to be added, this will be pertaining to your business, can be added.